top of the thing, when you say stream, it doesn't say what destination to go to? No, it didn't. So I'm looking now. Can you look on Facebook right now to make sure? Hey, everybody, we're trying to work out some technical difficulties. If I'm live to you right now, just hold your breath, say hello, and we'll see if we're getting there. I see something looking like it's trying to come on. There it is. Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, we had a little technical issue right there at the, the bottom of the hour, but uh, I'm excited to bring to you uh, this amazing story of the quilters in Ukraine. Uh, Maria and Nelga, <clears throat> who I'm interviewing today, is an absolute uh, goddess. She is a uh, mover and shaker. Her passion for bringing the Ukrainian quilters, the passion of quilting in the country, but also putting them on the international quilting stage has been amazing. And as you might expect, the past year has not been any kind of easy for anybody. If you cannot watch this entire thing right now, it's going to run about 40 to 45 minutes. If you cannot watch it right now, would you please come back uh, to the link on one of these uh, Quilt Show page, Ricky Tim's page, YouTube, uh, and, and definitely take time to watch. It is inspiring. I want you to listen to Maria's words because it is passion and eye-opening beyond measure. So without any further ado, I just want to share with you this amazing story of quilters in Ukraine as told by my good friend, Maria Nelga. Hey everybody, Ricky Tims here, and I am so proud and excited to have our guest today, Maria Nelga. Maria is in actually Krakow, Poland, but she's Ukrainian uh, from Kiev, and she's going to tell us all about what's been going on with quilters in the Ukraine and how they have been dealing with everything since the war started a year ago, actually. I know there was trouble before that, but the real assault has been about a year now, right? Yes. Yeah. It's been so, a year. So here's what I'd like to do first, Maria. I want to just talk about quilting in the Ukraine. You are the leader. You have headed up and created the Ukrainian Patchwork Association. And so you're the mover and shaker that keeps quilting thriving and going. But tell us a little bit about quilting in the Ukraine. I know you've been to the state, so tell us some differences. Tell us about the community. Thank you very much uh, for being invited uh, and have an opportunity to talk about Ukrainian quilters uh, and patchwork in general. And I'm very honored uh, here to tell uh, how it is in Ukraine now and how it was uh, before the war also. So uh, actually, uh, patchwork is in Ukraine developed uh, uh, very fast uh, and uh, we are moving from the very zero, from the very beginning with uh, uh, no materials, no fabrics, no uh, notions or something to the distributors that uh, actually have the newest products uh, that uh, are in American market, uh, but also are sold to Ukrainian uh, quilters. We have uh, quilt shops, uh, uh, bigger, smaller. We have uh, lots of quilters who have developed their skills uh, as a teachers uh, starting from the very beginning, but now they are uh, teaching their own techniques. We have studios uh, that are uh, like uh, open spaces uh, for those who want uh, to uh, know more about patchwork uh, and uh, to start their patchwork life. Uh, and uh, actually, before the uh, February 24th, uh, we have a very uh, interesting and fulfilled uh, uh, patchwork life. We have the festivals, we have the displays, we have uh, personal exhibitions, we have uh, uh, lots of the activities, online activities, uh, the individual life activities uh, uh, devoted to patchwork. Uh, and uh, uh, the life was uh, fulfilled uh, with uh, creativity and uh, uh, um, it is not just uh, the creativity, but the creativity with the Ukrainian style. Uh, and uh, we are very happy uh, to be integrated uh, into international quilters community. And uh, I'm happy that Ukrainian quilters uh, 
willing to um, share their ide ideas, uh, their style, but uh, to learn uh, the techniques uh, that uh, are uh, taught uh, by uh, famous uh, uh, patchwork stars internationally. Uh, this is uh, important. Well, I was I was gonna I was gonna say you say Ukraine style. What I mean, you see our style. What's different? What I mean, what is it? Because I'm sure that it's blending. But tell me about Ukrainian style. The Ukrainian style is about the colors. It's about uh, um, passion to make unique things, uh, not repeating uh, what they see in the internet. But even if they want to follow some pattern or some uh, artist or some designer, they always changing everything and make uh, all the quilts uh, very personal. Uh, and we have actually a famous uh, Ukrainian quilters that are known all over the world uh, and they work with their unique uh, techniques uh, of uh, uh, style, of uh, technique, uh, of uh, sewing technique uh, and also uh, of the performance. And that is what uh, Ukrainian patchwork is about. Well, I, I have come to really love what you have brought to the international quilting community through bringing the voices of the people that you know. You're, you're kind of the passionate leader, and I've had the lucky privilege to meet some of the Ukrainian quilters as well and see the works firsthand, and it really is exciting. Do the quilters in Ukraine, do they do kind of like what we do? Do they have guilds or small groups that actually meet together and, you know, that kind of thing. Does that happen? Um, before February 24th, last year, uh, in Ukraine, in most of the regions, so we had the uh, Quilters Guild communities that were uh, joined together and uh, even they had their own regional style of uh, patchwork. Uh, there were uh, classes and uh, quilting schools uh, in Kherson, uh, Odessa, Dnipro, Lviv, Kiev, uh, um, Kamenets Podolsky, and uh, other cities. Uh, it was so popular, but we actually are a uh, very embroidery, embroidery, um, uh, uh, embroidery country. We the Traditional uh, crafts uh, here in Ukraine is a hand embroidery, cross stitch, and also beading. But patchwork uh, um, has started to develop very fast uh, and is a very fascinating thing because it is it, it helps people to join together. It helps uh, to form the community of friends who are being joined uh, with the pieces of fabric to share the ideas and to spend uh, time for. You know, uh, Maria, I was in Kiev in 1998, which was, I mean, that's been a while ago, but to see the, the beautiful designs and the aesthetic, and you're right about the embroidery on garments and in tapestries, the, the tradition of, ta of textile in Ukraine is fabulous. And now the, the embracing of quilting, it reminds me of how the United States was during the Renaissance when quilting was really kind of, everybody was so excited. And that's what the Ukrainian quilters are bringing right now is that wonderful excitement. Now, I know that things have changed. I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the dynamics because that's really what I want to catch up on, the dynamics of what has transpired during this last year. Yeah, uh, the last year uh, was uh, more than difficult uh, for us. Uh, I must tell you that uh, uh, we actually have the war since uh, 2014. It's been nine years, uh, uh, but even being uh, in that uh, type of life, uh, we haven't expected of what has happened uh, n uh, during the night uh, of uh, February 23rd to February 24th. And uh, we were shocked as well as uh, the whole world uh, uh, was shocked. And uh, the life uh, changed just uh, at the single moment. Uh, uh, the single moment nobody uh, wanted uh, to realize that it happened. And uh, the war came, uh, the big uh, devastating war came, uh, and uh, uh, we needed to, to deal uh, with it uh, as uh, we could. And uh, the first uh, month uh, was uh, very 
very hard for everybody because uh, uh, we, the whole country was uh, under attack uh, and uh, cruisers, uh, Ukrainian cruisers uh, are living uh, around all the country. And uh, as soon as uh, we were receiving uh, the notes uh, about uh, uh, the places where the bombs landed uh, or any war actions happened, uh, so uh, we were uh, trying to find uh, the connection with those uh, who are there, uh, asking them whether they are okay. And I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, we have one quilter, her name is uh, Irina uh, Lukashenko, and uh, she was uh, that uh, lady that were uh, like checking, uh, ma making uh, the check uh, around the country whether everybody was okay. And uh, the single question uh, of uh, three words, how are you, meant uh, everything. Uh, meant, and the answer, uh, like plus or I'm okay, I'm fine, that was close, that was very close, meant a lot. When you are receiving the answer, you just know that the person is alive. And uh, 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 the moment you are waiting for that answer is uh, very difficult. And uh, as soon as we, because the word takes uh, lots of this common things from your life, uh, just like uh, being connected to internet, having the mobile uh, uh, network, uh, having just basic things we got used to, and the understanding that you cannot reach the person and uh, just know whether he or she is okay is very painful. It's but very painful. I, 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 I can only imagine You've got some video because the quilters are not going to let this beat them. Even when they don't have the luxury of things like electricity, I'm going to share some video here. You can tell me what we're looking at. In this video, we're seeing the, qu the quilters working without electricity, right? Yeah, this is uh, not even without electricity. Uh, this is the period of time that is uh, called worldwide like blackout. There was no electricity, there was no heating, there was uh, no understanding where the electricity will be. But these are the quilters that are making uh, the finishing the project they have started uh, to share the Ukrainian piece of culture uh, that is uh, uh, shown in the pieces of fabric that is a, a quilt wall handing. This is a project called uh, um, uh, this is the project uh, that was uh, uh, founded by uh, Natalia Safonova, and uh, the inspiration was Ukrainian painter uh, Exter, um, who is uh, um, an avant-gardist, uh, and the project will be shown in Italy this May. And these ladies were doing a fantastic job. Uh, it is not only about the job, it is about uh, the thing that Ukrainian petrol didn't stop with the war, and uh, people wanted to, to continue their strategy of life, uh, of their peaceful life uh, that was fulfilled with the pure emotions, with the love, with the happiness, with the uh, happy pieces of fabrics. Uh, and this is about the being brave uh, in the ability to think about future that will always come. Uh, and it will be fulfilled with the uh, patches and uh, they will be able to continue their creative life as well. On this next video, I want to just take a moment to listen and tell us um, after we hear what she is saying, okay? Доброго вечора. Ми з України. Зараз працюю над своєю красуною, вишиваю обличчя. І 12 вольтова лампа мені в поміч. This is Tamara Romanova. She is in Kyiv at the moment, and she is saying a very famous Ukrainian statement that Ukrainian soldiers said, hello, we are from Ukraine. And she says how she works during the blackout. Uh, she works with the um, uh, lamp uh, that is just like, like a USB chargeable lamp. Uh, and uh, uh, she, as soon as she gets the electricity, she just uh, charges 
first the lab to be able to continue uh, her sewing pro uh, protest and uh, she is uh, so happy uh, not to stop uh, and have the opportunity to make the stitch by stitch to finish the project on time and uh, she was she was working at that apartment uh, together with uh, Tamara Milovarva uh, that was uh, shown by you on the previous slide uh, and they were there was no heating there was very cold uh, in their apartment but uh, they went up with uh, their heart and with their will to live with the pure emotions uh, and uh, with the patchwork i have some pictures of another quilter i want you to tell us about this quilter and her project okay this is Yulia Gul, and uh, she is uh, a fantastic uh, lover of uh, uh, hand uh, um, sewing techniques, uh, hand uh, pieced uh, hexagons on a paper basis. And she was the first one who sent me the photos uh, uh, after three months, after, after three weeks, uh, uh, after the start of the big invasion. Uh, and that was the photo. Yeah, this was her basement of her house, uh, and she settled the place uh, for sewing. She also had that chargeable uh, light uh, in her basement, and uh, on the next photo, we can see uh, how she was making her quilt uh, with hexagons uh, on pa paper basis, and uh, this photo uh, impressed me so much. On this photo, there are fabrics, there is a uh, um, light uh, and uh, there is a bible laying on the table and uh, that photo told me a lot about uh, people who were uh, blocked on the suburb uh, of kiev and that lady was uh, actually uh, uh, living um, one month uh, under the uh, these heavily attacks uh, without knowing what will be tomorrow but she she was continuing her quilt and she told me that quilting and um, sewing these patches together helped her hands not to shake. And that was mm. the best therapy she uh, had. Uh, and uh, the war, unfortunately, the war didn't last it for two or three weeks. And uh, then on the next photo, we can see how she progressed with the days the war was trying to take the life uh, and take the inspiration. And yes, the days were passing and the war was uh, continuing. And so she had, for now, she has the quilt that is sized. Uh, this is like a uh, king size uh, yeah, quilt. Yeah, it's, it's big. It's big, but these flowers and the colors uh, and the passion for quilting shows that People are not uh, uh, about the war. People are against the war. People do not want to allow the war to enter into their life uh, and to take their pure emotions with what they lived uh, for that. And uh, the war is not a method. Uh, uh, and also, it is not the way uh, even people who are stay uh, at the territory of war, this is not the way they want to live their life. Uh, and this quilt is the confirmation of a choice, uh, uh, being people, being human, uh, even uh, in very hard life moments uh, that you cannot uh, uh, make anything with the situation that happens. Definitely resiliency. Uh staying strong, uh, mental, uh, you know, the quilting it helps us internally uh, to just keep going sometimes. And I have yeah. found that to be true with quilters in times of, you know, tsunamis or earthquakes or other tragedies, the quilters will come together and not only help each other, but they do the quilting and they do the work to sort of keep themselves sane through difficult and challenging times. Yeah. You have, uh, let me show the next uh, set of slides here because, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to just show these quilts. If you could just talk as we go through them. Yes. These are fantastic people who have submitted an international project uh, uh, that is called Wrap Ukraine with Quilts. Uh, they have uh, gathered uh, uh, more than 25,000 quilts uh, in the United States and uh, they uh, gave these quilts and donated these quilts uh, to the refugees that are staying in the United States, in Poland, in Ukraine, in Romania. So 
these people uh, were touched by the situation that is happening in Ukraine, and that was not about uh, uh, a political choice or, or any other, but that was about people. And people were trying to uh, help each other with what they can, and that help that much important as the financial don uh, donation because i think that this is the project uh, that uh, unites uh, uh, people uh, in between the continents uh, with uh, an opportunity to help each other because the quilt is not just a blanket the quilt uh, it is the masterpiece that has been made with pure love and actually, uh, you American quilters uh, were able, uh, thanks to that project, they were able to give a hug to Ukrainian refugees, to Ukrainian kids. Uh, and that power of humanity can be filled in every piece of fabric that you see uh, on the presentation. And I'm going to tell you that uh, next week, uh, these uh, quilts will be displayed in Kiev. And uh, we have uh, found the opportunity to make the exhibition of quilts uh, in the shelter. So even if uh, there will be the air uh, attacks uh, or alarms, so it will be secured and uh, the patchwork will continue the display. And I was so impressed uh, with how the international quilters community has uh, joined uh, their efforts to support Ukrainians, to help uh, Ukrainian people with the wood, uh, with the quilt, with every patch. And I can tell you that every quilt that you see on uh, that presentation has uh, the QR code that has the information about the quilt, uh, who has made that quilt, uh, and uh, uh, part of a personal information about like uh, email or uh, some contacts uh, in social networks that people from Ukraine who has got this quilt can uh, contact uh, with. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that in most of the cases, just the understanding that people who live very different lives in a different continents with no war, they are thinking about you being blocked with the war, being under the occupation, because people who got out uh, from the occupied uh, territories, they lived for months with the understanding uh, and with the propaganda that they are left by everybody. Nobody cares about them. But these uh, quilts that are made with the pure love uh, tells more than just a blanket. This is uh, such a worms, human worms, uh, worms that uh, uh, is as much needed uh, as, a, as a physical help or, or like financial help uh, in Ukraine. I, I mean, I know that those quilts come and the recipients have to know the work that it went into it, but underneath the work was the love that you spoke of, that they were made with love, they were made with care to bring a smile, to bring comfort, and to send a message that you're remembered, you're not forgotten, um, and mm -hmm. you're supported. We support you. And I think that is a, a strong message and hopefully does bring comfort uh, during a difficult time. Yes, and I want to add uh, one, one thing about these quilts that we have contacted to the charity foundation that uh, takes care about the kids uh, who has lost their fathers being soldiers uh, from February 24th. We say that these are the kids uh, of uh, uh, the father heroes. And uh, these uh, charity quilts uh, from Rep Ukraine with the uh, quilt will go to 108 uh, kids uh, that uh, are, have lost uh, and invested to the de defense of their country the most uh, uh, valuable things. So I do believe that just a few weeks ago that you, uh, you and, and the, the quilters organized kind of an, uh, a special exhibition. I know that Claudia File has been helping bring quilts for yeah. refugees. And some of these quilts were going to be on display, but there was attacks and there was lack of electricity. I wanna take a look now, if we could, at some of those. And I want you yes. to tell us this story. I think it's pretty pretty amazing, actually. Yes, 
for, uh, this is a, a, a project uh, by Claudia Falk from Germany uh, that she has started uh, from the very first day uh, days uh, of the big invasion to Ukraine. And this is the display uh, where uh, quilters has gathered uh, for kind of a guild meeting um, uh, at the center of Ukraine. But there was the day there was the ha Ukraine and Kiev was heavily attacked and there was no electricity. There was always the air alarms, the signals. Uh, there was uh, everything, even public transport uh, was uh, uh, stopped. Uh, but the four ladies, uh, Tamara Romanova, Galina uh, Karalova, uh, Natalia Katyuk, uh, Irina Vasilyeva, they got to that uh, display and there was no light in, in the um, I, 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 inside of the building. But the light of their heart and the light of the quills were so bright that that was not a problem for them to make uh, that event happen and just look at the face itself uh, and the happiness in the eyes uh, of quilters that if they they've got that opportunity for the happy moment uh, and they were making the uh, photos uh, with the, their mobile phones uh, lights uh, and nothing has stopped them and that light of humanity it can be felt from every piece of uh, uh, quilt, uh, every patch uh, uh, of that quilt. Uh, and I'm going to tell you that Claudia Pfeil uh, and her initiative uh, is so big and has united quilters from all over the world uh, of making the blue and yellow uh, quilt blocks that are uh, symbolizing the national uh, colors uh, of Ukraine. It really um, uh, helped uh, even us uh, to uh, uh, to, to think about uh, being uh, thought, being cared about, uh, and uh, that we uh, need to move forward uh, and uh, we need to think about uh, our patchwork future as well. I, uh, I, I actually love this so much because I do see that in the midst of, I, I know it is great fear and worry and struggle, the faces of the ladies that have been to this exhibit and and being with each other and being in a room filled with color and seeing this all happen with the uh, the cell phone lights um, and here's the volunteers tell us about this these are the volunteers these are the two very brave ladies uh, who took uh, the quilts uh, and uh, they will give them to the relocated uh, uh, kids uh, from the occupied uh, Kherson uh, uh, this is South uh, Territories uh, of Ukraine. They were so happy wrapping with these uh, quilts uh, and knowing that uh, uh, the blocks uh, of these quilts uh, uh, have been done by quilters from the um, uh, United States, uh, from Australia, from all over the world. Uh, and they are hugged with the women uh, and women love uh, and passion from around the world. Uh, this is... Uh, very, very touchable moment, uh, and the kids really feel that power of humanity in every piece of fabric. You know, and you're talking about all over the world. Um, you haven't mentioned Japan, but uh, the Japanese have also stepped up, and that's the quilt that's behind you with the cranes. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yes, this is the Japanese uh, project, uh, and uh, this is the Japanese uh, quilters uh, who have uh, uh, gathered uh, 150 quilters uh, to make the crane quilt uh, in uh, our national colors to support Ukrainian quilters uh, after the first uh, days uh, of the big invasion. They uh, emailed uh, to the Ukrainian Quilters Association and uh, got in touch with us that we think about you and we care about you and we pray for peace in your country and we would like to send you the quilt that we have uh, done in order to, to show you how important uh, these uh, Brave battle of Ukrainian is for us also, and uh, this Ukraine quilt uh, was uh, initiated. This project uh, has been uh, started by Kumi Maruyama. Uh, this is uh, the Japanese quilters 
quilter and she's a teacher and uh, they showed these uh, quilts uh, at the Japanese uh, quilt show and also they sent these quilts to us uh, and this year in October there will be the Ukrainian quilters festival and we will have these quilts uh, on the display and if you will uh, look uh, in every every um, quilt block of these quilts it has been done by different quilter and there is a signature from the back side uh, saying who, uh, who has done it uh, and with the uh, statement uh, of support uh, for Ukrainians and for Ukrainian quilters. So Maria, you have, uh, you, you, you kind of are the queen of quilting in Ukraine. I use that word because you're a leader. You, you keep the, you're the glue that has put it together and you're the glue that has kept it together. And I just want to talk for a moment about your mental well-being and how you have managed through all of this. And uh, I, I know it's very personal to ask that question, but I would love to hear a little bit about how you are navigating these choppy waters. Well, uh, thank you for that question and your, your personal support. Uh, but I may tell you that every person has a, a, it's his own limit. And uh, for me, uh, there was almost a limit. Uh, I found myself locked uh, with the war. And uh, uh, I, for the moment, I had lots of the doubts of whether to continue what I've been doing through 15 years of my life uh, and whether to continue the patchwork whether uh, it will be uh, needed uh, someday. But I want to uh, tell you that one day uh, when uh, my son uh, noticed that the studio was uh, closed for more than three months, uh, uh, he uh, came to me and uh, took my hand uh, and uh, told me, uh, Mother, you, for all of my life, I remember you like uh, a person who never gives up. And uh, you always taught me not to give up uh, and uh, always follow your dreams, even if uh, the way you need to come through is not an easy one. And uh, I want you just to turn on your long arm machine. And uh, he took my hand uh, and uh, just uh, pushed the button uh, uh, off uh, the computer, turning on uh, my uh, long arm machine. And uh, that was uh, kind of a, like, he, he just shake me up uh, and woke me up uh, because I was uh, freezed uh, for the first months uh, of the war. Uh, because uh, in my family, there are four men who are soldiers and they're defending our country on the front line and all uh, our family was focused on uh, prayers uh, i'm very thankful to my son who woke me up uh, and uh, to all of the ukrainian quilters uh, that always uh, uh, were asking me about uh, how am i and uh, um, when uh, they will see the next quilt so I didn't give up. <laughs> I didn't give up, and uh, we go forward and we continue uh, our uh, activity. I know that uh, uh, patchwork uh, is such a healing thing that uh, helped me to recover. And uh, I also one of the pushing moment uh, moment was uh, the post uh, of Yuriki teams uh, with uh, the quilt uh, that. Uh, you were making. Uh... Let me just share that quilt here. Uh, this is my quilt, and um, it's of course sunflowers for the national flower of Ukraine. Um, the the blue and the yellow swath at the bottom, of course, is the colors of the flag. And I had a comment on social media that the, somebody didn't like the red because it distracted from the beauty of the flower, but. Um, it's a very strong and powerful statement. I believe uh, the red for me symbolizes the blood of the innocents of those who don't deserve uh, what's happened to them, their loved ones and their family. So, um, so it is a little bit bold, but it's bold for a reason. And I ended up naming this quilt though something that's not so sad, which is sunshine on a cloudy day. And I feel like, you know, my granny taught me that there's always a silver lining, that no matter how bad things are, it could be worse. And 
I know that right now things in Ukraine are are bad, to be honest. You know, it's 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 difficult. But I hope that there is always this light that you spoke about, the light of the quilts, the light of the smiles, the light that comes from the cell phone. There's always a light that says through the darkness, we are going to find a way forward. I am so thankful, Maria, that our our community gets to know you a little bit through this interview. Um, you are golden to me. Uh, I first met you in Houston, I don't know, five or six years ago, and I knew that your spirit was one that wanted to bring honor and dignity, and you wanted to bring the Ukrainian quilters into sort of the international arena, which you have done, and you have glued a community together, and your efforts are, they are invaluable. I don't know that you'll ever fully know how much you have accomplished and the impact that you will have on not right now, but on generations to come. And so I hail you. My hat's off. By the way, speaking of hat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the hat I presented to you on the first <laughs> meeting. And that was devoted to the moment that First, that was the first time Ukrainian quilts, thanks to the quilt show project that united quilters from all over the world, that was display uh, of these quilts. There were three first Ukrainian quilts displayed at the Houston Festival. Yeah. That was uh, uh, for Ukrainian quilters. That was kind of a goal, like a goal that was uh, they they were afraid to dream about uh, to achieve uh, and uh, but. But that was the moment when I told them everything is achievable. Just uh, dream, uh, dream about it. Uh, and uh, so we are creating our reality. And may I take just like few moments saying how um, helpful the quilters community was uh, in Europe. Uh, the European Quilters Association. Uh, they were. Uh, we are actually the uh, member of uh, European Quilters Association, and they, from the very first days of war, uh, they were helping and trying to fund, fund, fundraise the uh, money uh, for the basic needs uh, of Ukrainians. And I'm gonna tell you that I was impressed how Spanish Quilters Association fundraised the money for uh, wound dressing uh, to heal people not only emotionally but physically that uh, we actually helped uh, the uh, hospitals uh, of uh, Ukraine to heal civilians uh, after the heavily heavy attacks uh, uh, buying the wound uh, dressings and the Italian Quilters Association they were fundraising money and they actually helped us to buy the 80 uh, the uh, hygiene kits uh, for uh, 80 families uh, uh, of the deoccupied uh, uh, Kiev suburb and there were so many cases when people were just involved uh, uh, with no request and uh, this is what uh, patchwork is about this is what the uh, patchwork community is the very open hearted uh, uh, and supportive people no matter what language you speak and no matter what continent you live and i want uh, to thank all of you uh, who uh, thought about us who supported us who wrote messages of support during that time who donated uh, fabrics who made the quilts uh, for ukrainian uh, kids uh, and just for ukrainians and kept us in prayers for that very difficult year for us uh, this uh, means a lot uh, and uh, we thank uh, for every initiative for every act of uh, open-hearted support this means a lot and uh, i cannot even find the appropriate words but I, we remember every everyone i can imagine and and you know it's easy for things to be uh uh I guess built big at the start, and then there there things can fizzle, you know, and they can diminish. Uh, the quilters are not going to diminish. We're going to stand with Ukraine. We're going to tend. If you have needs, uh, Maria, if there are needs, we just need to know. Uh, if there are programs, I know the quilters would contribute fabric or batting, or they would contribute bindings, or they would contribute. They would do anything they can to help. We just have to know. 
Um, and we don't want anybody to be overwhelmed as, either because I know that logistically uh, people are scattered. Um, but if you ever have a situation right now where I can be a voice and ask quilters you know, worldwide to chip in and help, would you please, please let me know? Uh, and I will, I will do that. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that the, the world gets to get to know you a little bit better. Um, you were talking about the, the, the quilts that came to Houston for the small exhibit, but then uh, in 2019, Natalia Lashko won uh, one of yeah. the major prizes, you know, and to have a Ukrainian quilt in the, in the top was really, really exciting as well. And that continued to happen in other shows in the United States. And we look forward to things getting back to normal. We, we certainly pray for victory and know that the future is, is going to be bright. And we're looking forward to seeing all the wonderful quilts that come out of Ukraine. And thank you so much for being the support for all of those wonderful people there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that next our meeting will be at the display of Ukrainian quilts uh, in American festivals and your quilts will come to people uh, capital of Ukraine, beautiful city, Kiev, uh, and uh, we will have that display. And I hope that uh, as soon as the war will uh, over, will, uh, but the wars definitely uh, have yes. that, uh, its endings. And so I've already, we, I've already promised you I will be there when it's safe yes. and we can gather. I will come and we will have a great time. So yes. God bless you, Maria. God bless the quilters in Ukraine. Thank and thank you so much for visiting with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye.